I wanted to sort of shift gears a little bit and make sure that I talked a little bit about the different tools that exist out there for delivering stereotactic body radio surgery. These include tools like the CyberKnife, which is, is tracking to treat a moving target, or TrueBeam, which is a Varium product or one of the Electa products that use either gating or emotion encompassing strategy, and then tomotherapy as well. The CyberKnife is a linear accelerator that's mounted on a robot, and the robot can rotate around, and the linear accelerator has these various stopping points, and doses of radiation can be delivered from each of these different angles, and there are very pinpoint doses of radiation that then overlap on the target in the lung. The interesting thing about the way the CyberKnife is developed is that it has motion detectors on the chest, x-ray detectors in the room, and they can develop an algorithm that watches the motion of the tumor and keeps the robot on focus and or tracking that moving target, if you will. In order to track this moving target, most of the patients with CyberKnife need to have fiducials placed in. These are gold seeds, if you will, that are located in and close proximity to where the tumor is so that as the tumor moves, these gold seeds move in conjunction. The robot can follow the seeds and keep the beam on the target. Now, there are some software improvements for this particular technology that for some tumor types were able to omit the fiducials and still treat these patients. But depending on where they're located, many times we still need to keep those markers in place. Here you're looking at a CT scan. The bottom row you can see three pictures and you can see that bright white. That bright white represents the fiducials that are there and you can see that that's what the robot is using to follow and treat that moving target. This is what a plan would look like. You can see a very high dose of radiation concentrated around the target where the fiducials are located, very little or low doses of radiation anywhere beyond that. So that's how this particular technique would be to treat this patient. To get treated on the CyberKnife system for a lung cancer like this, you might be coming three or four times to the department for the treatment, and the treatment might last 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how much movement that particular tumor had. You also can treat these patients without tracking and without fiducials, but you do need to make sure that the patient remains in the same position every time. And this is a device that helps to position the patient in that exact same position. So the purple mattress that you see there is a mold that is built for each patient. As the patient lays in that purple mattress, it basically hardens to the shape of their body so that each time they come in, they lay in the same orientation. For lack of a better word, you see sort of a saran wrap blanket that is overlying that patient, and it's hooked up to a suction or a vacuum device. What that does is it serves as a gentle reminder to the patient not to breathe very deeply, but also continues to hold them in the same position sort of from the top down. So patients are then immobilized in this position, and this is just a close-up view of a patient with their arms up over their heads so that you can see that they're being treated for their lung cancer. This allows us to suppress and immobilize the patient. So there are two approaches once you've got the patient set up like this. One approach involves what we call gating, which the beam turns on and off depending on the target location. And the other approach is called motion encompassing. The beam delivers the dose to the entire volume that you want to treat. I'm going to show you some examples of what these two things mean. Here is what gating means. As the patient is laying there, they're breathing in and they're breathing out. The tumor is moving, let's just say, in two planes up and down. But for the period of time that the tumor remains in one of those planes, say in expiration, the tumor is not moving very much. So you can turn the machine on, and when the patient starts to take a deep breath in, you turn it off. So as long as you have some sort of detector that allows you to tell where the patient is in that breathing cycle, the machine turns on and the machine turns off. So you can treat a smaller volume of tissue when you're treating the patient. So that's a gating-based solution that uses the chest motion as a surrogate. The advantage to this particular approach is that it doesn't require the implanted fiducial markers, and it does limit the amount of lung tissue that's exposed to radiation that doesn't need to be exposed to it. The second approach is one that takes a little bit more careful analysis, and it's the motion encompassing approach. 
basically what you do is you get a series of scans as the patient is going through the breathing cycle, and you understand what the tumor is doing in every phase of the respiratory cycle. And then you can create volumes, if you will, that represent the space in three dimensions where the tumor spent any amount of its time, the space in three dimensions where the tumor spent 85% of its time or 65% of its time or 45% of its time, and you say, that's the volume that I wish to treat. In our institution, when we approach it this way, we typically take a more generous approach, which is to treat the space in three dimensions where that tumor may be at any point during the breathing cycle. So in this particular case, this represents a target volume for where that tumor may have moved during the course of a breath in or a breath out. If you look here, you can see that the gray volume encompasses a green volume, which represents where the tumor is when you're taking a breath in. It also represents the blue volume, which is where you are when you take a breath out. It's an expiration image. So that whole white cloud represents both the in and out and everything in between inspiration and expiration as you do a single breathing cycle. We then add about a five millimeter cloud around that just to be a safety margin, if you will, and that becomes the volume that we end up treating. For most of the patients that have a small lung cancer, that is not a large volume and it can be done safely. So those are the three different generalized techniques and the technology that's used, one being the tracking that we talked about with CyberKnife, the other being the gating solution, and the third being the motion encompassing solution. Motion encompassing can then be further thought about as either using fixed fields or fixed angles or an arc-based approach. If you were thinking about fixed fields, you have the target, you have it localized in three-dimensional space, and then you aim the radiation from a number of different angles, usually five to seven different angles, and all the beams overlap on the target tissue. A treatment like this might take 45 minutes to an hour, and this was the treatment that sort of SBRT was pioneered on, that you divide the dose into five different angles, and then you deliver these very high doses of radiation. During the treatment, you'll get a CT scan while the patient's on the table, verify that the tumor is in the location that you want to treat, verify that the target volume encompasses the tumor, and then proceed to treating it. Another approach that's sort of come into more vogue is to utilize technologies that deliver the radiation in a much faster fashion than fixed field approach. In our field, that's called VMAT, or volumetric modulated arc therapy, and this is a way of delivering the radiation in a sweeping arc, if you will, to encompass the target volume. So basically what happens is that the machine will rotate around the patient and spin in a continuous fashion, delivering one or more arcs. At each angle from this 360-degree arc, there are internal leaves in the machine that change the shape of the radiation as it comes out of the machine. In addition, the energy of radiation that's coming out of that machine, the intensity of the radiation that's coming out of that machine can modulate as it's going through. So the dose rate, the gantry speed, and the leaves can change positions dynamically. So what this allows you to do is deliver the radiation much quicker than you could do if you were doing stop and shoot treatment. That's particularly important for patients that don't want to lay on the table very long. So it improves your clinical efficiency, but it also means since you're not turning on and off the machine and changing the shapes in a fixed field fashion, that you actually deliver less whole body dose of radiation because you have less leakage. The process uses the same body fix and mobilization system we talked about before, the same planning tools we talked about before, but it can just be simply delivered much quicker. The treatment targets look a little bit better than you can see with fixed field approaches, meaning that they're tighter and less lung that's exposed to it. In this particular slide, you can see that the dose of radiation is very, very close to the target, very little spill beyond the target itself. And then here's some data from our own institution looking at the delivery times. So these patients, the actual delivery time of radiation, if you do just one arc, is about six minutes. And although it's counterintuitive, if you actually ended up doing two arcs, you can finish the treatment in a quicker period of time, about four minutes. This is all compared to a treatment that might be 45 minutes or more that either uses gating, tracking, or fixed field approach. So it's simply a lot better and a lot quicker on the table. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our GraceCast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace 
find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support. Thanks again.